What do monsters have at 11 a.m. every day? A coffin break. Okay, this is from a very terrible joke book that was a gift from some of my students called the Smelly Socks joke book and I would not recommend it. Anyway, what I would recommend is understanding how to measure unemployment. And that's what we're going to look at in this video today or tonight, depending on when you're watching this. When we think about measuring unemployment, there are three measures we look at. And the three measures are the labor force, the labor force participation rate, and the unemployment rate. When we talk about the labor force, what we've got is it's the section of the population 15 years of age and over who are either working or actively seeking work. It's the number of people employed in an economy plus the number of people unemployed, the number of people who are in work and the number of people who are actively seeking work. The next thing we look at is this thing called the labor force participation rate. This is the percentage of the population, again, 15 years or over, in the labor force that is either employed or unemployed. That if we're talking about the labor force participation rate, what we've got is the size of the labor force and the labor force here. And then this is divided by just the working age population. So just one more time, the labor force participation rate. Okay, that is the size of the labor force employed plus unemployed over the number of people in an economy that are eligible to work. Our final measure is that of unemployment. This is where individuals want to work, they would really like a job, but they are unable to find a job. And as a result, the economy's labor resources are not fully used. But the key thing with unemployment is this fact right here. That the people are actively seeking work. So they're not employed, but they are actively seeking work. If we're talking about the labor force participation rate, we've got the labor force here. So all the people, all the people employed and unemployed divided by the size of the total working age population. So everybody over the age of 15 in the economy. And this whole thing is times by 100. With the unemployment rate, we've got the number of people that are unemployed over the size of the total labor force times 100. Here we have uh, an example taken from the 2003 HSC in terms of calculating employment and unemployment. So what we've got here is we can see we've got the population, the working age population, employed and unemployed. So if I'm looking at this question, what I might do is say, okay, population, that's the whole country, working age, that's everyone 15 plus employed people who have jobs officially unemployed they're seeking work so what we have to do is we have to work out which one of these is the correct answer so let's start by looking at okay let's start by looking at what has happened with the unemployment rate so what i'll do it is i'll just look at over here If we're looking at the unemployment rate, remember that the formula is the number of unemployed over the size of the labor force. And if you recall, the labor force consists of, let's say, A plus B, where this is column A and this is column B. So remember, the size of the labor force is all the people that are employed, working in jobs, and all of those people that are looking for work. So if I'm trying to work out the unemployment rate in year one, I can see, okay, the number of unemployed is two, the size of the labor force is two plus six, eight, 25%. And then if I go to the second year, okay, the number of unemployed three, size of the labor force, these two together, 12, again, 25%. Okay, so you can see here that the unemployment rate hasn't increased or decreased. In fact, it stayed exactly the same. So now we know that participation rate is what we're gonna look at. So let's shift over to doing those calculations. Okay. 
Sorry about what's happening with these numbers, something to do with PowerPoint and the way it's doing things. Anyway, what we can see is the labor force participation rate is the size of the labor force, which again is columns A plus B, divided by the size of the working age population. So here we can see for year one, the size of the labor force is eight. Now the size of the working age population is 10. Okay, so it's 80%. For the second one, year two, you can see the size of the labor force A plus B is 12, working age is 13. Wow, 92% of people are in the workforce. So we can see here between the years, the participation rate has increased. That from year one to year two, it has gone up. Okay, hopefully this is clear. If you need to try it yourself, have another look through the calculations. The key thing is to be very clear about the formulas because in the HSC in New South Wales for economics, no one's giving you any formulas. The last thing in this video is that our ways of measuring unemployment have problems, that they're not actually perfect. The first thing is that we have an issue of underemployment. Underemployment means that people are employed, but they wish to work more hours. When we calculate unemployment, really what we look at is people are employed or underemployed. We don't really have a good and detailed look if they are employed and would like to work more hours. And the reason this is important is because of this. Underemployment represents lost output. These people could be working more hours and contributing more to the economy, but we don't have that way of tracking them. The other issue with our way of measuring unemployment is that our official stats don't keep track of people who have left the workforce and are not looking for jobs. So we can very accurately or reasonably accurately track people who are employed or looking for work, but we can't really look at those people that have given up on looking for work. And the people that have given up looking for work and the people that have given up looking for work are the hidden unemployment. So actually, our unemployment rate could be higher, but because we define it as people who are actively seeking work, we don't really think about those people that have given up. Although those people who have given up, they could be more labor resources that could help grow the economy. So this brings us to the end of our discussion about how do we measure unemployment. Um, subscribe so you don't miss a future video. Have a look at some of the other videos about unemployment that could really help with your understanding. And as always, thanks for watching.